You always want to play as many home games as possible, and it just kind of worked out. When we lost Trinity International, we were able to get Northern Michigan to come down here as well. So, I mean, for us, it was it's going to be a big emphasis on making sure we protect our home field because if we can do that, we got a chance this year. It is the rarest and most favorable of scheduling anomalies, as Quincy University has been gifted five straight home games to open this season. A potentially powder keg scenario, but one Gary Bass knows his team has to get right. That in sharp contrast to the cautionary tale that was last year's season opening loss to Glenville State. Uh, very, very important. You always got to start off on a strong foot. You know, uh, last year it seemed like we kind of went into that game thinking it was going to be one. You know, uh, you can't do that. You know, no matter who they are, what the record is, where they come from, you always got to respect your opponent, you know, going in there. And uh, I know that we're going to change that, and the way we've been preparing is the way we're going to change that, and it, it's going to show. To that cause, the Hawks returned nearly their entire defense from last season, including homegrown talent Peyton Plunkett, who was impressive enough last year in his QU debut to garner a bit of post-collegiate career momentum as well. I've done a couple interviews uh, with the Draft Diamond, same thing BJ did. Uh, that's been really exciting, and then some agencies have followed me online and things like that. Uh, where it goes after that, I don't know. I'm going to go out there and play within the scheme, and I'm going to play my game. And then from there, you know, whatever happens, happens. He played lights out last year. I mean, he's been a guy that has not only been a great football player, but he's been a phenomenal leader for our football program. Uh, and, and I expect this year to just be lights out for him. And he's big, he's physical, he can run, he knows the defense in and out, uh, and he's been a phenomenal leader. So I can't wait to see what, how he does this fall. We have 10 of our 11 starters coming back. You lose Peyton Chapel, which good luck trying to replace that man. But Brock Inman has been playing lights out since the spring. And then come in the summer, he's been playing lights out, and then the fall. And not only that, we got Jackson Connell, who's talking about, we're talking about him playing some middle too. He's been getting middle reps, and he's been fit and stuff like, like he's done it before. So, I mean, yeah, Chapel can't be replaced, but we got two guys that are, that are going to go in there and do a great job for us coming in the season. I feel really good about where we're at. Uh, so defensively, we had the most coming back in our second year under a new defense. Coach Pannon's done a phenomenal job as well as the rest of the defensive staff. And, I mean, for us, we're really expecting high things from that defense. Offensively, the Hawks must breathe new life into what has been, at times, a frustratingly inconsistent attack. Gary Bass addressed that with running back newcomers in a buyer's market this offseason. I mean, we've got three guys that are transferred in uh, on top of the guys we already have in-house. I uh, feel really good about Tion, Jaden, and JQ, all three of the guys that are transferred in. Uh, they're all a little bit different as far as their style of play, but they're all three really, really smart, good kids, good players, hard workers, and biggest thing for those guys is get them the football as many times as humanly possible and keep the clock rolling. Paired with a largely veteran offensive line. You've got a lot of guys coming back. I mean, yeah, you lose Mario and you lose BJ, but I mean, Nathan Smith played a whole lot last year. Cade Cameron's been a starter for multiple years. You got Lucas Sartori back, Austin Deering's back. Uh, I mean, for us, the biggest one was left guard. Mason Petty's played well. We got a true freshman right now, Trey Wentz from the St. Louis area, uh, who's playing really, really well as well. So we feel really good about where that group's at right now. But ultimately, the Hawks' fate here comes down to quarterback play something QU has struggled to gain consistency with in recent years. I mean, we got three guys that can flat out play. I mean, we were able to go out and, get, and sign Drake Davis, a transfer from Northern Michigan, who, who's played for two years uh, at Northern Michigan in the GLIAC. Uh, brings a lot of experience. Uh, Ike's been in our system for two years. Uh, he's playing really hard. He's doing a lot of really good things, and it's going to be fun to see exactly what happens in the next three days before we technically start getting into shattering state mode to see which one of those guys are going to be behind the center on that first game.